I decided instead of waiting until this weekend to uh, go ahead and do that media nitrogen cycle video right now while it's fresh on my mind. So let me get comfortable. All right, so you remember this from the last video, nitrogen, nitrate, nitrogen, sorry, ammonia, nitrate, nitrate. So typically, most people think of filtration as just getting stuff out of the water. And in most cases, uh, that's true for the aesthetics of it. Um, when you have a koi pond, you're trying to establish an ecosystem within a container outside. So you have to incorporate biofiltration to break down that ammonia to nitrite and nitrate. So typically what you'll find in a waterfall, like what I got back there, skimmer box, which I got right up here, is you're gonna find a coarse pad. And you see very, very big pores in it. Technically, this does work as a form of biofiltration because beneficial bacteria can grow on this. However, the debris that is collected through the water the mechanical filtration covers it, smothers it, if you will, and, and doesn't allow it to live or to, to colonize and spread. So typically, this alone by itself will not provide enough bio filtration for a koi pond, especially with any kind of fish stock in it at all. So typically, you're gonna have a coarse mechanical filter and then you're gonna have a fine mechanical filter. As you can see, it's much finer. Uh, it, it catches smaller pieces of debris, obviously. Um, and also this could support beneficial bacteria, but the solids that it collects smothers it, doesn't allow it to get the oxygen it needs to colonize and, and proliferate and grow and all that fun stuff. So it's only good for mechanical filtration. Now that being said, without your mechanical filtration, you cannot have effective biofiltration because the debris will collect on your biomedia and will smother your bacteria, not allow it to grow. So most people build a separate uh, biofilter. Typically those biofilters have some form of primary mechanical filtration just to catch anything that got through any of the other mechanical filtration and then you'll have the bio balls they come in different shapes sizes you don't have to buy bio balls you could use plastic milk caps if you wanted or bottle caps uh, pot scrubbers scotch bright pads there's just there's anything that beneficial bacteria can colonize on will work the key is making sure your mechanical filtration is sufficient so your beneficial bacteria can grow on your media. So that brings us back to the nitrogen cycle. Okay. These little balls or whatever you have in there, get the beneficial bacteria and they start to colonize. Okay. As the water passes through these, around these, over, under, every other direction, that beneficial bacteria feeds on your ammonia, breaking it down, okay? So once it breaks it down, as we talked about in the earlier video, you make your nitrites, okay? There's a second stage of bacteria that also lives within your beneficial bacteria that goes to work at breaking down the nitrite, leaving you with nitrate, okay? So how filtration and understanding the cycle will help you understand your filtration and any problems you might occur or might run into if your ammonia levels are high when you test that means you do not have enough biofiltration biomedia beneficial bacteria to break down that ammonia typically happens with an undersized biofilter or overstocking of the pond okay so you could have you know way more fish than you should have in a pond as long as you have the biofiltration 
to accommodate that load, okay? Because you're gonna have more fish feeding, more fish breathing, more fish defecating, urinating, all that fun stuff in your pond. Typically, on a normally stocked pond, I feel, and this is my opinion, I don't know if there's any scientific data to back this up, you should have 10% of your volume, your water volume, into a biofiltration system with biomedia, air circulation, all that fun stuff. So if you got a thousand gallons, you should have a hundred gallons of biofiltration. How you boost that is having biomedia with lots of surface area, okay? So technically, if you had a biomedia with lots of biofilter, or sorry, surface area, you can get away with having half of that. So you could have 50 gallons, okay? So let's go to the next step. You have no ammonia traces in your pond, but you're still picking up nitrite. So that means that the second level of your beneficial bacteria isn't doing its job. So again, instead of, oh my gosh, what's wrong with my water? You wanna look at your biofilter, okay? You wanna look at your biomedia. First thing I would do is look at your biomedia, see how much surface area you have. If there's not enough surface area there, it's not gonna finish the process. Look at the circulation how your water is circulating through your biomedia. You want as much of the surface area of this ball to touch that water as it's coming through to take all of these contaminants out. So now you get down to the last one, nitrate. Again, it's not gonna go away. It'll be low, but it's not gonna go away because there really isn't a bio filter that breaks down nitrate other than plants i still haven't found anything i'm still looking i'm still researching uh, the only thing i could think of would be having a bio filter full of standing water basically and it has moss and algae growing in it because that's a plant it would absorb that nitrate nitrate sorry and allow it back into the pond and you would have a lot lower nitrate count um, it would get smelly, it would get stinky, it would attract bugs, all that fun stuff. So, I'm going to take you over there, I'm going to pause this now, and I'm going to show you what I mean by keeping the balls moving. Um, usually using aeration to do that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, uh, I'll be right back, catch up with you in a minute. Okay, so we're back over by the pond, um, and again, waterfall. It has capabilities to grow beneficial bacteria, but not enough to keep up with any kind of fish load. And again, I, I don't have a lot of fish and they're not huge. So at the size they are now and the water volume they have, that still was not enough to keep up with it. All right. So again, I built this. It's 32 gallons if I remember right. As you'll see, all the balls are moving around. They're getting as much contact as they can with all of the water, okay? The air pump, there's four different lines running into it, four different air stones. And I suppose I got those valves about seven eighths of the way open. They're not wide open by no means. About right here is some mechanical filtration just to catch any of the fines that have gotten through. It's a fine pad. So we catch the fines because the pump that feeds this has a pre-filter. And again, I don't want to drop my phone in the water, but it has a pre-filter that catches all the coarse, heavy debris. And I clean that filter about every two to three days. This one, obviously the skimmer is the pre-filter. So when it gets over there, it's good. And then I have another pump down there with a big pre-filter. All that does is circulate the water. There's no beneficial bacteria or beneficial filtration to that filter at all. It is literally a debris filter. That's all it is. So again, keeping the media oxygenated, 
with the aerator, keeping it moving, keeping that beneficial bacteria growing, and I have good, clean, clear water. All right, so I'm gonna go back up there. We'll explain it a little more. I'll be back in a minute. All right, guys, one quick thing I wanna add. Um, I done a video on uh, Pond Syndrome. A lot of people have done videos on Pond Syndrome. One of the biggest problems with Pond Syndrome is this cycle isn't taking place yet. So when you test your water, you're gonna have nitrite, ammonia, nitrate off the charts, all over the place, inconsistent for a very long time because your beneficial bacteria isn't established yet. There isn't enough growing, colonizing to process all of your ammonia and all of your nitrate. So that being said, during your new pond syndrome, what I'm explaining about how to troubleshoot your filter, that really doesn't apply, okay? You, you wanna wait until you start to see your levels stabilize instead of being all over. So all of a sudden your ammonia comes down to 0.25 or 0.5. All of a sudden your nitrate is down that level. Your nitrate's about the same level. When you start to see consistent levels, then you can make those adjustments. Then you can say, okay, I'm not breaking down my ammonia enough. I'm breaking it down some because I am getting nitrate, but I'm still getting ammonia and nitrate in my water. So that means it's not breaking down enough in the ammonia level and it's not breaking down enough in the nitrate level. The only thing you should expect to see when your beneficial bacteria and your biofilter is working correctly is trace amounts of nitrate. I obviously have plants in mine that's gonna take up nitrate. Um, they won't be in there forever. They're only in there now because my fish were small. It was for shelter for the fish. I'm gonna try to duplicate some type of consumption of nitrate when all the plants come out. Don't know how I'm gonna do it yet. I'm trying to figure it out. If anybody has ideas, please let me know. Um, I have heard Baki showers do very good for that, uh, but you're still gonna get your trace amounts. I'd like to have nothing. Like now I have zero ammonia, zero nitrate, and zero nitrite. I don't have trace amounts of any of it in there. So it's working well, everything's working great. As the fish grow, that biofilter is not going to be enough to keep up. It's going to need more. And I know that. And I'll end up adding probably another 32 gallon drum with nothing but biomedia in it um, to help further, you know, the breakdown of the nitrite and the ammonia. So, yeah, that's, that's just in a nutshell what it's all about. And again, understanding the nitrogen cycle will help you adjust your filter to work properly. If you pull out your pads and they're full of gunk, you have no bacteria working on your pads at all. So you, if you wanna boost your media or your beneficial bacteria a little bit, keep your pads clean is a good start. Um, make sure you have enough biomedia. What I typically do is my coarse pad, I rinse in pond water. My fine pad, I spray out. Okay, because rinsing it and wringing it out in the pond water, it just doesn't get them clean. You clean them every day. So I, I take the hose to it. I get them bone, bone clean, just not a speck of dirt in them. Let them dry, shake them out good so there's no chlorine left in it. And when, usually when I do the deep clean of my filter, I'm doing my water change as well. So I've got my chlorine neutralizer in the water. So if there's a residue amount in here, it'll get neutralized. Okay but I always clean my fine filters as clean as I can possibly get them. And these, I just rinse off into pond water. So if there is some bacteria colonizing on here, it can still live, okay? So best of both worlds, I guess. Um, so if you guys have any questions on any of this stuff, again, I am not an expert. However, my brain has been a sponge for this for about six months. I've been reading as much as I can, watching tons of videos. There's a lot of guys out there that, uh, James the Koi, Koi Whisperer, he's, he's a really good one. He's very technical, um, very tedious with his, his builds. The, mine looks like uh, 
I'm not putting my work down, but mine looks like a back alley dumpster compared to his setup. It's it's pristine and it's very well kept. Same thing with Andy over there at uh, the Koi Pond Lifestyle. He, it, it, it's just really nice, really nice. And mine's getting there. That's where the keep on improving comes from because it's it's growing and getting better every day. And that's just part of the hobby. Um, so again, I'm not an expert, but I do a lot of research and any questions, if I don't know the answer, I can direct you somewhere where I think they will know the answer or I'll figure out the answer and, and I'll get it up there and I'll get it posted. Um, I don't ever want to mislead anybody. If anybody ever hears, hears any misinformation, please let me know. Um, and I'm talking misinformation, not opinions, okay? I'm talking scientifically backed misinformation. Let me know. Um, I don't want to misspeak. Um, so again as always guys thank you very much for watching um up to eight subscribers already kind of shocked i was so shocked with three so now we're up to eight i'm i'm even more shocked um so keep liking and uh keep subscribing any ideas for videos that you want to see me do please let me know uh the next video coming up will probably be more of the winter talk because like i said i got another couple nice weeks it was 90 today um, so I got another couple nice weeks of weather, so I'm leaving it alone I'm um, letting the fish enjoy it and then uh, I'll probably do another video of what I plan on doing the things I've made uh, To get us through the winter and hopefully the kids as I like to call them Hopefully the kids come out good healthy ready for spring hungry and ready to grow another 10 inches So again, if you guys like what you see, please like um, subscribe share it with your friends or anybody you think might be interested in it. Um, I do enjoy doing these videos because um, again, it allows me to talk about something I enjoy, a hobby I enjoy very much. So when you guys do comment or, you know, like it, it, it makes me, like I said, it makes me happy. People are listening. So I know there's other people out there are just as crazy about this, this hobby as I am. So as always, keep on investing. Keep on improving. That's the most important one. Keep on improving. Um, like I said, these fish rely on you to give them a, a good home, if you will. Um, and it is a rewarding, fun hobby. So I'll talk to you guys later, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.